happy Gregorian New Year. I'm actually making this video on the 2nd of January, which is Red Galactic Moon. So we're integrating the previous period of Red Moon, which happened eight days ago. I'm making the video actually about the Gregorian New Year. And yesterday I was experiencing it and seeing what happened. Um, remember with using these systems, we're a human being having a human experience. And sometimes we have to have challenging experiences and keep repeating them in order to understand how they were created especially once you get to your mayan elder level which is repeating all the previous 13 year cycles because you've done them and so there's a lot to cover in this video and i might end up making two videos because again i'm uh, limited mm -hmm. to time as to how much time I can spend on this each day. And this is another critical factor in our patterns and how we create our future is each day what we do. What we did yesterday on the new moon, sorry, the new year, what we did yesterday on the new year in the new moon energy of Capricorn, so the moon is waxing to the full moon in Cancer, which is the culmination of the goddess energy that we experienced in the summer solstice. We will be repeating that in some way in our future. So the more that we can be mindful about what we do each day, remember each step that we take, each creation that we engage in, each disciplined climb up the ladder up the mountain which is what Capricorn is it's being disciplined being a disciple and taking the small steps so just imagining that you're a little goat climbing up the mountain and that's a very handy tool to use as well a shamanic tool to use when you're ever in a situation for example if you're climbing down a hill or a slippery slope, or you're not sure about your footing, if it's icy, is you can take on, imagine, grok yourself into, I am the energy of the goat, and I am taking these sturdy little footsteps to keep myself grounded and nose down at times to the path. So remember, we have to look down to make sure we are following the path and staying on it and staying grounded and looking up to the starry skies, looking up to the future, looking ahead to see that we are going forward and letting go of being stuck. So remember the Gregorian New Year is an invention and it stays the same every year in terms of where it is in the cycle. It's always on the 1st of January. So that in itself tells you a huge amount if something is static every year and does not take mm. into account the planets. So, for example, Easter as a celebration happens at different times of the year because it's affected by the moon. And so, again, if you want to know more about any of these topics, just Google them and start on your own cookie trail. And again, this is what this energy is all about. This energy is all about aligning with the universe and cosmic influences and remembering who we are. Red moon today 
is about authenticity and being the beacon of light. Just watched a great video with Gabor Mate about this. How do we know what is authentic? Because our society is so distorted and all the people in it are generally so distorted that they're trying to make themselves fit into a template that is very unhealthy, focuses on suppressing all the symptoms that our body shows us. So our body doesn't lie, our body shows us, no matter what our mind says, if we are not in alignment with health and truth and wellness, it will show us in the form of disease. And then if we continue to ignore that, it will get worse and worse. And the Western medical model is simply focused on suppressing the symptoms so we can carry on doing the same old thing. Another great video I watched is the Inspired Channel. And that was about the Ringing Cedar series, series eight, and how there has been a very clever change of perspective over thousands of years where people thought they were freed from slavery because of the invention of money. And it simply changed everything around how people focused on creating money and wealth on the outside as a way of avoiding what's on the inside. So remember that the key to this is working with the reality of what is, how it makes you feel, and using emotional freedom technique to release your triggers, release your traumas, release your emo emotional conflict, and change your behavior. That is all essential to this path. So in this year, this Gregorian year that we're in, we are in a year seven yellow resonant star. And again, if you Google, I'll put some links below the video, but if you Google the seven pointed star, these are deep spiritual truths and it will show you about the mystic. So we're in the year of the mystic in terms of the Gregorian, being the star that we really are. And the whole energy of this is in the, uh, in the green castle. The green castle is the fifth overtone of all of these. The red, the awakening, sorry, we use red moon, all of the reds are about awakening, but red moon is a planetary energy. It's about awakening to truth, authenticity, and being the beacon of light. And the cycle began in 2006 till 2018. So what was happening for you then is key. Remember, you can learn about all these frameworks, these universal frameworks. The most important focus is learning about your own framework and becoming very familiar with your pattern so using these outer structures and using your inner structure, your inner awareness, what your challenges are, what your patterns are, setting your goals, if you're still in that framework for the Gregorian year. It's not really about new year, new you. It's about understanding you and how you work with changing what no longer serves you that isn't authenticity and how you become a beacon of light by healing your shadow story. So we're now in a 13 year cycle of white refinement truth. So all our empowerment issues are coming up. This started in 2019, it's white wizard. And so again, remembering that whenever we are going through these cycles, there's a way of clicking them in all together. The more you become familiar with that and your own cycle, 
you'll start to make huge quantum leaps, which is key to why we're here at this time. Blue, blue storm. And that is about the shadow story, how we heal it and how we come into our center. And then yellow is yellow seed, is releasing the star seed that's within us, the truth, the manifestation of the galactic code that we bring with us in this lifetime. And we can share that more and more, the more we heal and free ourselves from the human being story, which is yellow human. Green is a combination of all of these and how we're seeing how free our heart is and how connected to the galactic sun we are because we're free of our human being story. So yellow resonant star and the planet is Venus. And again, if you Google the seven-pointed star, you'll see how Venus is completely tied into that. But basically, in very simple terms, what does Venus mean? Well, it's what we value, what we love with uh, Uranus in Taurus at the moment. And the moon was in Taurus at 11.11 yesterday, Pacific time. So again, remember this whole cycle began on the 19th of May and we are in red rhythmic moon, which I spoke about in my last video. So we're seeing what needs to be released from the old world. And every January the 1st is day 20 of that moon. So again, if you think there's 28 days, and if you use the moon framework, so using the moon as day one would be a new moon. So by the time you get to the 14th day, you're at a full moon dynamic. So we're now at a waning moon in terms of that framework. I know it's complicated because there's lots of different frameworks going on. So in terms of how does that fit in the Gregorian calendar? Well, we're seeing what's manifest about how we're being the star that we really are, rather than what our ego has been brought up to believe that we are in this conditioning. And so it's recognizing again, what our conditioning consists of. So it consists on an epigenetic way of what we've inherited around beliefs, how they're reinforced as well by our family, by our caretakers, and key to this full moon coming up in Cancer again, home, nurturing. Another way that you can use this is you can go back 20 years as well. So if you think yellow resonance star, go back 20 years, and that is yellow cosmic star. So you think going back 20 years, what was happening for you back then? So that would be 2003, wouldn't it? What was happening for you then as to authenticity and being the beacon of light? And if you think back, just think um, beyond what's happening now. Just think what our lives were like, let's say 35 years ago. There was no mobile phone on maths. Just trying to think of the dates. Or maybe it was just being introduced back then. I think when you were a child, if you're around the same age of me, as me. So let's go back to the 1960s, late 1960s, and think about how we did things differently back then. So if you wanted to go and meet somebody, you 
either had to send them a letter or if they were lucky, they would have a phone. Now, I know in my first house, we didn't have a phone. Uh, my nan did down the road, but we didn't have a phone at all at my first house. And we didn't have one until we moved into a shop. And so, again, think about that. Just think about how our minds work differently, how our relationships were different, how life was much slower. You know, you used to go around and knock on somebody's door to see if they were playing out. You'd have relatives who would just drop in on the chance that you're going to be in. So just think about that dynamic how much slower life was, how differently it was. You couldn't get hold of people all the time, you know, just when you wanted to, in a minute's notice, you know, like now we send a text or we send a message or there's great things about that too, you know, speaking to people across the world, there's great things. But it's just a very different dynamic and, I'm doing a degree in forensic psychology. I had an assignment and I was completing it yesterday. And so looking at the history of self-esteem, for example, the milestones of self-esteem. And again, it, Google it, check it out. Somebody called William James actually coined the phrase in the early, well, late 1800s, early 1900s. So it's been around for a long time. But then if you look at how that's progressed and how quickly that is now changing, how our self-esteem would have been created in our family, in our culture, in our village, for example, so I grew up in a village, or how different that would be if you grew up in a city, or if you grew up in a monastery, a charity place um, where you didn't have any parents. Just think about that dynamic, that shift. And then how that is now being studied, especially by people who are in power to be manipulated. So we've got social media and you know the studies that have taken place around that and how these frameworks were used in a way that people didn't know they were being used and how they were guinea pigs basically to see how their self-esteem could be manipulated. So this is profound stuff that's happening now. And that's why it's so important to be aware of what's resonating with truth, which is what this Gregorian year is about, resonation. We're in a 13 year cycle of white mirror. So in the Gregorian calendar, 1st of January, we're in a 13-year cycle of seeing our holograph, looking at what's truth, which is tricky. How do we know it's true? Because a lot of the time with things on the internet, with news, again, looking at strategic models of how to manipulate people, Propaganda is a key thing. And if you look back in history, again, you'll see how people have been manipulated through fear, through their distorted stories that they haven't healed and cleared. And this is, again, key to Red Moon. Red Moon, if you, the shadow of Red Moon is doing the projection story. So we've also got the 13 year cycle of White Wizard and that began in 2019. So 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. So 2017, so just before was White Mirror. So think about where you were, what you were doing in 2017 and when this was initiated. 
So I'm going to, like I say, I'm limited on time. So excuse me if I'm going fast or rambling, but of course you can always stop this video at any time. So the card for yesterday, Realm Shift. Now there we've got a five-pointed star, which is very different to a seven-pointed star. This is the pentagram, the pentacle, discs in terms of the tarot. It's the human being shape. And I think in one of my blogs, I've put Patrick the starfish and um, out of SpongeBob, because if you've ever watched SpongeBob, you know it's pretty deep. It's far deeper than a child's mm -hmm. cartoon. A lot of them are, of course. And cartoons, again, have been used to install templates, mems, to go in quite innocently around how to shape people's mindsets and behaviours, particularly when they're children. This is what has to come off now. So I'm not going to read it out. I'm just going to put it there so you can pause it. But it's exciting. It's a quantum leap. Okay, and this is the Mayan Oracle. Fantastic set of cards, very different. So basically the qualities are quantum leap, expanded reality, web of possibility, assemblage points, the unknown. Check out Carlos Castaneda and associated works around assemblage points, because again, this is the wiring, this is the Merkaba inside, this is the conditioning, and in the ancient mystery schools, in order to get somebody to shift their assemblage point, so a very quick way of shifting your belief system is to immerse you in huge fear. When to see Avatar 2, which on one level was amazing, like Avatar 1 was, and has a lot of truth in there, but it's also very disturbing in terms of the violence. There's a hell of a lot of violence in there. Um, and the adverts were off the scale on noise. Now, you know when that's happening, the people who are creating that state for you to engage in are playing with your emotional state in order to imprint something on you in order to get you to buy things more. This is also key to where they position text as well, because they're getting you to move your eyes, EMDR. So again, if you know about that, check it out. The other cards, I picked seven cards. Okay, so very interesting what we've got. I'm just going to sort them into the different. Okay, so mindset sets. This is my interpretation, as all of this is, of course. Mindsets that need to shift. Cruelty. When you have experienced cruelty, write down those times and with the intention of letting go and your higher mm -hmm. self, your emotional self, your child self showing you where they are in your energy field, in your past, in your conditioning, so you can let them go. Also, with the intention of changing behavior, because we've got lots of coping mechanisms around when people have been cruel, when they bullied us, how we've tried to manage that because we can't manage that. This is key on an individual basis, because remember, this is what shapes the holograph on the outside for you and the shared game plan too. Defeat, again, think about times when your ego has felt defeated. Remember, we're here, Venusian energy is with the mind calendar to mature the blue monkey, the inner child, become a parent to ourselves, let go of distortions, let go of our ego wounding in order to grow up, come into a light place, clear, free even, of distortions. Okay, so those are key for the mind, swords. 
start a new beginning with cups. Empty your cup out mm. using emotional freedom technique. If you tap on one of these events that you've written down every day, you will change your whole destiny unbelievably because remember your amygdala holds this and keeps projecting it out this is a red moon energy it will keep projecting it it will keep bringing the same experiences so you understand that the problem is a solution and when you work on the inside the outside has to change this is law so being anxious having high blood pressure for example cannot exist if you have healed these past times changed your behavior then you change your reality you don't have the same experiences and you become calm blue storm in your center keeping your head when everyone else is losing theirs has to begin on the inside now is the time. Ace of Wands. Lord of the Flame. Fast, dynamic, spirit in action. And when we act from a grounded, centered, healed space that is connected to source, we are on fire unstoppable, on a mission that's coming from a healed heart connection place. So now is the time to really focus on what we want to create because soon, in eight days, we'll be going into resonant moon and seeing how we're resonating with authenticity and being the beacon of light. We get loads of chances on this. We get a new chance every day. So it's never too late. There's always the potentiality to create new beginnings every single day. And it starts from within doing the work. Now, Major Arcana, the first one I got was the lovers. So remember, being a lover to yourself. This is the sixth Major Arcana. It's balancing the masculine and feminine within. So moving away from codependent relationships on the inside first. So what role am I playing? How am I in balance with my feminine energy? How am I in balance with my masculine energy? Where am I out of balance is all, always a good place to start. So... If, for example, you've always been the caretaker, you've always been the mum role, whether you're masculine or feminine, it doesn't matter. How can you bring that into balance? So if, for example, somebody is making money for you or you're in a position of not having a lot of money. So again, remember, this is the Taurus manifestation of this cycle that we're in the last few days of. How can you make that shift now so that you're caring more for yourself rather than everyone else, for example, and you've got time for you to do what you love? Remember, if you're doing something you love in business, you cannot fail as long as you're not doing a codependent pattern. So again, where people often make a mistake, if they're doing healing, if they're doing therapy work, is they're not making enough money. And there's a whole mindset around that. And that comes back to the other mindsets that I've talked about earlier on. You know, it's not safe to be me. It's not safe to come out. These two. So again, if you look these up, oh, I use elitarostrikingly.com because his web pages are amazing. There's loads out there. Find the one that feels for you. I don't get any monetary gain from any of these resources that I mention. Okay, so that one, the chariot I actually got last, uh, but this is key as you can see to what's on his head, cancer. 
the soul in the chariot of the human being. And these are all very significant as well. So again, the structure, look at the structure of your human being chariot. Whether you need to hold your horses, do some inner work, because remember when the spring equinox comes around, that's when the, we're out in the world. Right now, we're, we're supposed to be resting. Okay, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's time for going within. And there you go, the sun, beautiful card. So again, look at that card. These are so deep, these cards. And all the many myriad meanings are on his page. So I'm not gonna go into that here. Check it out. And of course, do your own reading because this is connected to my energy and yours will be connected to your energy. So remember as a holograph, we are a fractal, you know, so you just take one cell off me and you put it in a Petri dish and you take it anywhere in the world, that is the core of me energetically on a cellular basis. And so when you're doing things like working with the eyes patterns, when you're working with the hand patterns, when you're working with the feet patterns, reflexology, when you're doing any energy therapy, when you're working with the triggers, it's unique to you, your genome, your blueprint, and you absolutely can change it as well. Because each generation, as we go through that, with the next expression of that dynamic, that ancestral line. And we're here to match that. And if you look at astrology, if you actually start mapping your own code and you start talking to your ancestors and you see how it's mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing, it's... Um, so healing in itself doing it because you have no doubt that you're simply repeating Groundhog Day in so many ways. And then once you learn the, the other tools where you keep what is important, valuable, truth, authenticity, wisdom, magic, when you keep that and you heal the, the stuff that isn't, that's trauma, ADHD, massive on the planet right now, is a result of trauma. Everything that we've got is a result of where things have happened that are distortions, that are unnatural, that are poison, toxins, and identifying these now is absolutely essential. The people who are perpetuating the toxins and the poisons make a lot of money out of it. They have a lot of power that goes with it. And so they're not going to want to give it up. And it is craziness. It is mental illness. It is the antithesis of how we are going to live in the future. And we have to go through this stage right now. So this is another great book which is about codependency. Now you can see codependency in terms of addictions and addictions, they help keep us safe. They help us cope. Um, they have a positive intention on one level, which is to take us away. They're a dissociation in action. They take us away from the reality of our day-to-day -day living that is causing us pain emotionally, physically, on some level, but remember the soul within knows the truth of that. So the more we decide to stop the denial and actually look at what's going on in our life, then the more we can heal. Whilst we're in denial, whilst we're in separation, whilst we're in victim mode, which again, like I said, I don't really like that terminology, but whilst we're in a childlike space of for whatever reason, not feeling safe to look at what's going on or not feeling capable of moving 
out of that toxicity. Whenever we're in that, we can't actually make the shift that we need to make. So it's essential as a first point is to come into acceptance of where we actually are. And often that can be huge in terms of the emotion that it's going to bring up and the psyche has to be able to deal with it. Uh, if you check out Emotional Freedom Technique, it's an amazing, amazing tool to use. Also, if you feel that you're under pressure psychologically, get help, get support, join groups, and there's always an answer to this. There absolutely is always an answer because we're here to work through these challenges. Okay, so again, I'm going to place that on. I'm not going to read it out in its entirety. Make New Year's goals, dig within and discover what you would like to have happen in your life this year. This helps you to do your part. It's an affirmation that you're interested in fully living life in the year to come. So it gives a direction on a magical level. It gives an intention. Notice what you're drawn to, that your higher self will be directing you if you allow it. Now, remember, the more that you're stuck in head-led activities, let's say, um, thinking that you need to do X, Y, Z, rather than exercising your intuition muscles. So your head might be saying, oh, I've got to do X, Y, Z today, and you know, blah, blah, blah. But there's a part of you that's saying, no, you must do this. You must, part of you is arguing with that, saying, no, you know, I've got to, so for me, for example, finishing my assignment, I had to stay disciplined on that because there was a timeline on it. And I had to fit in doing practical things that are important to me and important to other people that I live with in order to maintain a good flow of energy in my home. This is the mastery of the self, quieting the mind. So you may use meditation for that. I promise you that if you do lots of EFT and tapping and you use a movie technique and you remove times in the past that have created trauma for you, you will naturally come to a calmer space where you can just be and you can channel and connect to source and you can figure out your next move. Remember, mm -hmm. The more you can change that dynamic, your world will change. And it's having the faith in yourself and the faith in the universe that this will happen. This is not just doing positive affirmations, which are great in themselves, but they will not change who you are on the inside. They will start a process going. The most important thing in my experience, is the letting go of what is no longer serving us. And that begins in your own personal life story. And so we have to look at what feels painful. If we don't have the tools, of course, we're not going to look at what feels painful. We're still going to be doing behaviours such as going on vendors, consuming drugs that distort reality, such as alcohol, cannabis, numbing out so we don't feel the pain, that can be with food, changing our energy levels by using sugar, for example, filling ourselves up with food, buying things to create a temporary happiness. And again, it's allowing yourself to notice what do I do to not be the real me, to not be with me present. 
feeling the feelings that I feel? Can I feel sad? Can I feel angry? It doesn't mean I am that thing. It means something's happened and my emotions are showing me whether that makes me feel happy, sad, angry. If we get so stuck and immersed in denial, we'll stop feeling those emotions and we become ill. And again, going back to what I said earlier, the body doesn't lie about that. One of the things about addiction is people have a belief system that they feel they're forever going to have to avoid whatever they use to numb out, to disassociate. And in the beginning, it can be a good idea to not go to the places where people are still don't, doing those things that you don't want to do. But remember, underneath all of this, it's what's underneath. That's the key. And when you address that, you won't need to use anything ever again. Please get in touch if you'd like to chat more about this. And I'm wishing you an amazing Gregorian New Year that resonates with being the star that you really are. Bye for now.